And joining us now for our costume designers panel is Phoenix Mello for Sylvie's Love on Amazon. I am Marcus James Dixon, senior editor at Gold Derby. And Phoenix, I know before uh, the whole COVID thing happened, you guys actually had a red carpet at Sundance and you may be the last film to have a red carpet as far as I know. What was that whole experience like? Um, yeah, that was right before the pandemic shut down. Um, and, you know, it, it really, I don't know, the whole experience was so fast for me. Um, I went from a show, flew in, and then had to fly right back out. So I didn't really get to uh, have a big celebration at Sundance except for the after party and stuff. But that was the first time that I had actually seen the film. Um, and uh, just when, I don't know, watching your own work, you know, you tear stuff apart and or you're like, oh, I wish I had done things differently. But throughout that, I just, you know, felt so hot and just knew that, I don't know, what we had made was very special and unique. And um, I'm so happy that it got bought by Amazon and that everyone's gonna be able to see it <laughs> for December. So uh, Christmas day, December 25th, I mm -hmm. think so. Well, I just love the way the movie opens. It, it's Harlem in the 1950s and there's kind of a sea of people all wearing muted colors, blacks and whites. And then when they part, that's when you see uh, Sylvie, Tessa Thompson, she's standing in this eye popping blue dress and you can't take your eyes off of her in this moment. What Can you talk about that and, wh and why you chose um, the color blue for that scene? Uh, this scene was Eugene, the director's obsession. Um, he talked about this the moment that we met about the project and I, also reading the script, you know it's, the way that it's written just has that breakfast at Tiffany's moment where you're just waiting to see the hero. And he always wanted the blue, uh, Tiffany's blue, I guess it's not as seafoamy as a Tiffany's blue, but um, just he wanted that impact and that, Sylvie and Robert's color sort of um, to be this cool tone that brings them together. Um, and that dress, uh, so at the time, Tessa was an ambassador for Chanel. And going back to the Breakfast at Tiffany's thing, um, with Audrey Hepburn being a big inspiration for Tessa, um, Givenchy dressed Audrey in most of those gowns in that movie. And at the time I got introduced to Chanel and there were, I think that's right around when Lagerfeld actually passed away, but he is one of my favorite um, fashion designers. <laughs> and mm. we reached out and we were able to, I was able to work with them um, since I had a very small budget for this film, very low budget. <laughs> um, mm pick out gowns that would work with Tessa's character and then also with the style and the era of our movie. Um, and this ended up being one of them, uh, a dress from Chanel. And we were planning on making it and there was this bit, you know, we, I had this, excuse me, this silk and, you know, the camera test and we, it just wasn't the right blue that I wanted. It like didn't have a punch. And we were prepping as we were going. Um, we shot this film, I think in like 28 days. Some, it was like 30 oh, wow. days of shooting really fast. Um, so as we were going, you know, I was still figuring out some of the costumes for Tessa. Um, she had 56 costumes um, in this film and yeah, so we built this dress and then it wasn't working out. It, like in my mind, it just didn't have that wow impact. And weirdly on the truck that same day, like the dress had gone missing. It was oh. crazy. And we, I saw that we had picked out that Chanel dress but never tried it on. And 
I brought it into the room and she put it on and it just was this wow moment. And I talked to Eugene and it just felt like a Cinderella story. Mm. <laughs> so I hope that came off in the first scene. Oh, yeah. It definitely felt that way in the, uh, the trailer. And um, yeah, so we, it was so fast, you know, ran downtown to get chiffon that matched the dress to have the stole that matched and you know we were obsessed with the jackie o mac gloves as the story progresses and, and sylvie kind of leaves the record shop and becomes a, a tv producer her wardrobe also seems to get more sophisticated um can you talk about the evolution of her clothing throughout the movie and uh you mentioned eugene ash the director writer producer was he kind of uh, did he help you or did he, you know, have any discussions with you about that? Uh, yeah, so, yeah, I definitely wanted to show the progression of Sylvie's costumes and the changing time in her life, like have a very distinct 1957 look and then have her in the 1962-63 look to be much more sophisticated, like you said, um, professional. She's now a mother. She's a working woman. Um, she, she still has all the same strengths that she did in the 50s um, when they were first falling in love. But at this time in her life, she really knows herself, I think. And she's you know, she has this struggle with her, you know, trying to decide what's the most important thing. Um, but just in her clothes, um, yeah, just showing the sophistication. And I, I, her inspirations in the 60s were like Diane Carroll and, um, I mean, still Audrey Hepburn. But um, I think that's sort of when we introduced the Chanel dresses, and there are a few other dresses there um, that, you know, just a woman that has a chic sophistication about her. Um, yeah, and then Eugene, he, wow, we really clicked when we first met because we have all the same film, like favorite films, which are in this era, mm. <laughs> uh, particularly the late 50s and early 60s. Um, and we just really bonded over the looks of a lot of films. Um, and he would share with me all his inspirations from his own family. You know, this is a, a lot about his story, I think. Um, and also about, you know, um, music of the time you know there's a lot of music in this and it was so important to have that throughout um the movie so yeah just his interaction with me he really believed in my vision we were on the same page um from the beginning i think and you know he really gave us the freedom to do what we wanted to do um and this was his first film. So, you know, I feel like I have done these eras um, quite a lot. So uh, I felt, you know, confident in where I can find and source things and how to make these silhouettes work and dress, you know, body shapes. So he, he really trusted us, uh, the hair and makeup team as well. So I loved working with Eugene, mm. yeah. One of my favorite characters was Wendy Mc McClendon Covey's <laughs> TV chef. And I imagine you, you probably did some research to see what kind of clothing was being, were being worn in that era by, you know, women on, on television. Can you talk a little about that? Um, yeah, she is the TV personality that Sylvie is working with. And she is, she has a cooking, show so for me it was definitely about what the what her kitchen looked like what color <laughs> that kitchen i think there was a yellow and a bright blue kitchen so i really had to work uh with the production designer on that but we also only had like a day it was a day before but before she worked that i got to fit her so mm. um 
it was very fast, but you know, I was collecting because I didn't know who the character was going to be, you know, and you collect things hoping that it might fit. And, you know, <laughs> it does when it just works out. Um, but yeah, I definitely went with a house dress for her, but almost a fancy, like she's cooking for a dinner party or for her husband to come home. It feels very, um, uh, yeah, just the American dream in the 50s, you know? And then when she gets, when Sylvie takes over, um, she sort of lets herself loose a little bit in the show. So even though she's still, prim and proper, um, she has a little more of her sassy side come out. So yeah, I do love that character. <laughs> and before we go, I wanted to mention Eva Longoria's character, Carmen, that she, was a, she had a very over the top personality with the singing and the dancing. <laughs> that was probably a fun character to dress, wasn't it? Yes. Uh, uh, yes, that was very, very fun to dress Eva Longoria for um, Carmen. Um, I got to design her performance costume, and I did get to make some stuff throughout this film, but I had to pick and choose because of the time that we had to produce it. But her looks, yeah, her look definitely, I felt like we designed, and she knows all about tailoring because of her background like her is her mother or her aunt is a tailor and she, she knows all about how it's supposed to fit her body and take it in take it in so she really loved that we got to make something for her for the um new year's eve performance and that was very her character was very much inspired by uh dorothy dandridge and carmen jones um just like the off the shoulder and tight fitting silhouettes. Um, and she really brought herself to that character. You know, I, she had a lot of fun with the polka dot dress that she wears for the birthday and um, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you Phoenix for chatting with us today. Uh, the movie opens um, on Amazon, it streams on Amazon, I should say on, Christmas Day, so I hope everyone goes and watches it. It's, it's a very beautiful, intimate uh, film. So thank you so much.